It has been a year since Hurricane Michael devastated Mexico Beach, Panama City, and other neighboring communities when it slammed into the panhandle as a Category 5 storm. The hurricane is blamed for 49 deaths here in our state, and it left behind billions of dollars in damage. This is new Sky 4 drone video we recorded earlier this week. A look at just some of the damage not yet repaired. Homes and buildings covered in blue tarps, residents still without a permanent place to live, and just piles of debris everywhere. News 4 Jack's reporter Jennifer Reddy returned to the panhandle for two days to bring us an update on the painstaking recovery effort. Jennifer, welcome home. Thank you, Tom and Joy. This is the second time we've gone back since this storm hit. And the good news is there is some signs of rebuilding, but they still have a very long way to go. One year after Hurricane Michael, Barry Lawley is looking ahead. I mean, I just got my roof put on 10 o'clock. It was done and it's been almost a year, so. The roof of his Lynn Haven home is finally finished after it was damaged during the Category 5 storm last October. But many of his neighbors are still picking up the pieces, waiting to finish repairs and living in RVs. Less than 10 miles away in downtown Panama City, crews are starting to clean up the marina and civic center, a once popular community spot for boaters, fishermen and event goers. Chief Financial Officer Jimmy Patronis toured the damage in his hometown with News for Jacks. It should have boats, it should have activity, it should have excitement, it should have people fishing. And, and right now, uh, it just smells like people fishing. It's, it, it's, it doesn't have, a, uh, it doesn't have a, uh, any energy. It's, um, it's a little bit of a, a tough reflection, it really is. In the Civic Center, the inside is stripped down. And in the auditorium where acts used to perform and kids once graduated, the lights are out as the city decides what's next. Across the way, the former library being used for storage shows the eye-opening power of a Category 5 storm. This is the former Bay County Public Library, and the damage is the same as it was the day after the storm hit. You can see parts of the roof hanging here and debris and glass scattered everywhere. Since the storm, Patronus says there's been roughly 147,000 insurance claims related to Hurricane Michael, totaling over $7 billion in insured losses. In Bay County, thousands of students have left the district, and several schools have been consolidated. Patronus says a major concern is the impact the trauma is taking on students' mental health. You know, you take schools for granted, you really do, because it, it, gives, it gives even our, our children a consistency in their life. So as you see, we're, uh, where Bay District Schools has had consolidation in schools, closure to schools, uh, you're shuffling kids around, around kids they've never been around before. Um, it's, it's that, that trauma is, is, takes its toll. Although it could be several years until downtown and the rest of the panhandle are completely restored, Patronus is confident it will return to its vibrant self even better than before. Despite the challenges over the last year, Patronus tells us people are staying and deciding to come back if they are able to. And looking back at our time there, that is one of the biggest things we noticed is the resiliency of the community and their determination to rebuild. What an incredible look. Thanks for showing that to us. Absolutely. So what happens next? What's the next step for a lot of these buildings that you showed us in the areas? There are a lot of still unanswered questions. Like for instance, the Civic Center. They don't know if or when they will rebuild it. They're still trying to figure out what to do. And a lot of that comes down to funding. They're still trying to figure out where to get money to repair certain things or if they're going to knock building da buildings down, put buildings back up, repair them. But they also did just this week pass a long-term recovery plan, and that will take care of some of the areas like right near the marina, updating the stormwater drainage system and those types of things. So that is one step in the right direction. We've talked to Jimmy Petronas before in his hometown of Panama City, and he's gotten emotional. Did he get emotional with you when you were interviewing him? Tom, he, he did, and not as much as we've seen in the past. I mean, it has been a year, so time has kind of healed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as we heard in the story, you know, it's a tough for him to sit there and look at that marina where he's used to seeing 
boats and fishermen, and now you're not seeing that. And he even talks about the problems they're having with insurance claims. And he says, these are our citizens, and it's very hard for him to see them getting taken advantage of when they're already going through such a tough time. You know, as our lives go on, it's so important to remember that for some people, life has stopped right now. Absolutely. So, Jennifer, thanks for bringing that thanks. to and us. And always we know this could be us. Oh, this could be us. You know, and hopefully never ever, but you know, this could be a possibility. The biggest freaky thing for me was, it was a Category 5, just 230 miles away. A Cat 5, 230 miles away in October. Yeah. I mean, to me, I, I can't, even a year later, I can't put my mind all the way around that. It, it, you know, our hurricane season usually is confined to a window, if you will, between about the 10th of August to about the 10th of October. Show us that graph. That's right. And you can see that usually by now or, you know, a year ago today, to think that we were having a Cat 5 coming on shore, it was just, like I said, mind-bending. And uh, as you showed us the pictures, it's still mind-bending to see all the damage that's taken place out there. And I still worry about the children and the, and the kids growing up. I did a lot of work with Andrew. Uh, I was covering it live in Orlando at the time. But uh, I was reading reports as the years went by. And a lot of these kids wake, uh, you know, grow up to deal with suicide and depression that carries right on through adulthood so you know i mean lasting trauma exactly and this is the the other part we have to kind of remember if we ever have to you know, we go through some kind of experience similar to that hopefully never to, to take a look at what's going on for us here uh, locally oh joy needs to read sorry oh well a reminder that coming up tonight new at 10 we're going to take it back to mexico beach where homes, as you saw, businesses leveled a year ago by Hurricane Michael, an area where some have just abandoned their properties, others are trying to move forward well, for the first time since the storm. As Jennifer said, we're seeing signs of starting over. That we're going to bring you tonight on the 10 o'clock news. And right now on newsforjax.com, you can watch extended videos from our Sky 4 drone as we navigated through the panhandle earlier this week. You can also watch our report from inside the military gates of Tyndall Air Force Base one year after the eye of the storm cut right through it. See the efforts to rebuild to make the base better than it was before Hurricane Michael hit. Just look on the homepage of news4jax.com.